to Jonathan Honig and Erica Payne, Adam Olszewski, Ashley Webster. Ashley, what do you think? Well, if you're trying to bring some parallels to 1973, you know what the, the biggest song in 1973, or one of the biggest songs, was Pink Floyd, Money. Is How that ironic. So? That's absolutely is true. That so? And the root of all evil, they say. Uh, is it going to be the same this time around? Well, I think the market's certainly unstable, but uh, political. Could th are you saying, is, could this bring down the Obama administration? I'm not in that camp. No, I'm I don't think so. I think that's overstating it. It's a drag, is what I'm saying. It's it is a drag. A drag. And and a it's a distraction. It is a distraction at a time when uh, this country needs to be focusing on uh, the economy, getting jobs, and getting uh, things rolling again. But uh, no, I don't think it's going to be 73 all over again. Oh, well, speaking of 73, a popular show at that time was Columbo. Mm -hmm. uh, you might re you're too young, remember? <laughs> one of the things, Thank you. You remember everything looked like an open and shut case, and there would be Columbo. I said, you know, just one more question. This mm. call you got from the former president. He just offers you a free board seat uh, that doesn't pay anything. It just doesn't make sense. And on and on we go. Before you know it, the one who looked like the most unlikely culprit is on his way to San Quentin. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see where I'm going? <laughs> Do I see where you're? I don't really see where you're Neither going. Neither do I. Mean, I no, but, 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 no, so my point is that we're all making light of this right now that it couldn't go anywhere. And Watergate started as a break, you know, and paid much attention. Then we started hearing of a cover up in the presence. Then top people, John Ehrlichman, uh, Haldeman brought into it. Talk of tapes, talk of cover up upon cover. You know, it, it gelled into something no one saw happening. So, Neil. Here's, here's something that I think the people should consider. This, this whole thing that's happening with Sestak, in my mind, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, we have a splinter and we've forgotten the fact that a tree just fell on our head. You know, I mean, I've been working on financial... I like Colombo and Alice. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on financial regulatory reform for the last 18 months. And through this prism, you can see more than, more than I ever could have imagined the corrupt relationship between Washington power and Wall Street. And I think if you look at almost every single so this industry, mm. it really does. All right, so Jonathan, if Eric is right, this is, you know, we, we know these jobs have a way of coming and going. Deals are made in New York, where I'm sitting right now, a, a, a key hand-picked Democratic Party senatorial candidate um, uh, was so wanted by the White House that they pushed all other entrants out. So right. what's so new here? Well, Neil, nothing's new. I guess what's really new is that now the economy really is more than ever run out of Washington, not even Wall Street. So when you see another depth of corruption occurring in Washington, I don't think it inspires a lot of people to necessarily buy, get into the market. I mean, we saw a disastrous month for stocks. And when you think about it, of course, you know, the, the suspect news is bad. I don't think it's necessarily market moving, but it doesn't inspire confidence. And when you see a country like Spain getting downgraded by Fitch today and the market now, you know, not off too far from a multi-month low, most people I talk to are, are preferring to sit on their hands rather than take new risks with still so much uncertainty abound. Gary, if, if political scandals just pop up out of nowhere and they, 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 they just get to the point where people are, are at them, I should say, Gary coming later, um, do, do, do you ignore, do you just sort of focus on the macro here? The macro is, well, everyone else here is pointing out, is... Dicey. We don't know where financial regulation is going. We don't know Europe's out of the woods. We don't know about this Gulf oil leak. And that's the stuff that's going to dominate. Well, if, if you compare it with 1973, Neil, there was one story that mattered, and it wasn't Watergate. It was, it was the oil embargo. That was what caused that stock chart that, that you were looking at. I do rem vaguely remember Colombo, by the way, Neil. And uh, <laughs> this... <laughs> This isn't, an, this isn't an, oh, I just have a one more question. This is a complete, complete non-story. This is the White House talking to somebody about a board seat because, right, yeah, they fine, wanted fine, him to fine, do fine, something. Fine. But Ashley, my that's question their right. to you, okay, when you heard that Bill Clinton was involved in this, did yeah. any part of you yeah. say, that's weird? Yeah, but it seems to take on more weight. Pardon the pun, but it does, doesn't it? He's losing weight, apparently, but it does. Yes, All of a sudden, when you hear Clinton's involved, true or not, whether it's unfair or not, you think, oh, wait a minute, what's going on here? And much as you kind of detail the progression of the uh, Watergate affair, you kind of think, well, is there more to this? Um, we'll see. But uh, once you hear that Mr. Clinton's involved, you kind of think of backroom deals well, why do you and something think a little shady. Why do you think there's more to this? Do. They they, why? They but do why this. do you they think that? Pick, there isn't even a warm relationship between the White House. They have to do some, They have to send well, somebody in that somebody you know, that Joe Sestak thinks is important enough to talk to him about right. that issue. 
You know, and so well, it, it has know, nothing to do with backdoor deals fine. or anything it's else. It just thing, has to do you with, you're with how do you, you offer... You hear what you're saying, how jaded your generation sounds. <laughs> that you were saying <laughs> that I... You I think it's a good idea. I think, be I think it's a good idea. Well, you've got to get a life. I'm just saying, <laughs> if, if you are saying now that this isn't a big deal, if, uh, look, you know, Congressman, we'd really prefer if you stayed in Congress. You're doing a great job in Congress. We're going to give you a thing on the board. And, and you know, really, let, let clear the way for Arnold Specter. On any level, young, middle-aged, old, um, busy date life or not, Weird. It's weird, and you know it's weird. Neil, may I? I don't think it is Neil, may weird I just given say what I've learned about Washington. Yeah, it's sleazy. This is, this is, I'm telling you, it's a splinter. But there are a lot of really interesting things that we people could look splinter. at. And, and, and Representative <laughs> Issa, I actually <laughs> right. did a and great you, job you know, investigating AIG and the counterparty right. payments. Mm. Right. I wish and he turned Jonathan, you were going to make a point. Who was making a point? Adam? Well, Neil, I was. I would please, Neil. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Adam. This is what political... This is what political leaders do. They talk to people in their party and say, right, this right. is where we think you'd be well, best. Well, you're all right. In my day, this stuff was bad. <laughs> all right, uh, we're going to have a lot more from the mess in Washington.